In this tutorial, I wanted to talk about dialog boxes in Unity. Now, it's not the most glamorous of subjects. However, when they're designed and implemented correctly, they can save the user of your tools time and importantly, lower their frustration. I will start with the dialogues Unity offers out the box, then show you how to create your own and put in some advanced tips on how to make them better and so much more useful. As always, links to relevant documentation from Unity and links to the Asset Store assets, like this amazing office, can be found in the description for this video. So let's start with the dialog box that Unity offers straight out of its libraries. In our editor, we're gonna create a script and it's gonna be a menu option. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create it to clear the player preferences. Now, if you don't know what player preferences are, they're basically preferences that you can store between game sessions. And they're super useful. So take a look at them when you get a chance if you don't know what they are already. Let's jump in. We'll clear out the default items and we're going to make a menu item, which basically comes from the Unity Editor Library. So jump in. And if you don't know about menu items, there's another tutorial video that I've done that goes into them in a lot more depth than I'm going to go into here. So check that out after the video. So we're going to create a menu item in my menu and we're going to call it clear player prefs. Ooh, spell that correctly. There we go. Okay. And we'll just build function clear player prefs menu item. Great. There we go. Okay. Now, next thing we're going to do is the actual, the actual um, function to clear the player prefs is from the player prefs class. You've got delete all. Okay. So that's the thing we're going to call. But what we're going to do is we're going to call this dialog box that Unity offers us to basically check if we want to do it or not. We want to make sure that the user is sure they want to clear all those preferences out. So in editor utility, there is display dialog. This has a title. So what appears at the top and we'll call this clear player prefs. Then we get a message. Are you sure you want to clear the player? Press. Give it a question mark. Then we give it the OK message. In this case, I'm going to use yes. And we always give it another option. And in this case, we're going to give it cancel. Now, obviously, if you were doing something that just to tell the user about some state that's changed, etc., you could just do OK. So for instance, if you had um, something happen in your editor where you're saying to the user, the route is now complete or something like that. You could pop up a dialog box that just had an okay at the end of it. But here we're going to give them the option. So put the if statement in there because what it returns is it returns a boolean as to whether they press yes or cancel. And we'll do this. There we go. Nice and neat. So if I save this and go back into Unity, we'll see an option pop up called my menu. And under my menu is clear player press. When I press this, Unity gives us our dialog box. There's the title. Are you sure you want to clear the player press is the message. And we've got our yes or no, our cancel. And we've got our close button as well, which also acts as a cancel. So we press yes, and it would do it in the background. Great. That's awesome. Uh, it's great that Unity provides that. But with something like this, where you're clearing your player prefs, going into here and pressing yes every time could become tedious for your user. So there is an advanced option called the get dialog opt out decision. And what this does is it enables you to have another button in this box that says yes, and don't ask me again for this session or on this machine, which means you'll never ask them again. So let's implement that. So if we go back into our script and we look at what we've got here under the display dialog function, we have extra options at the end. Dialog opt out decision type. And this, as I mentioned, we can select for this machine. I, it will keep this option across the sessions or for this session, which means during this session of Unity that I'm playing in, this option will be selected and I won't have to see this dialog again. 
Now we need to keep a key for this so it knows that for this dialog, this was the option. And in this case, we'll use player press option. Okay, so if I save that and we go back into Unity to see what it looks like, Unity loads up, we press my menu, clear player prefs, and there you are. There's this extra button that Unity puts in for us. Yes, do not show me this message again for this session. So if I was just to press yes here, I come back, it comes up again. If I press yes, do not show me again for this session. Then when I come back in, I press clear player prefs, it's doing the option for me. It, it knows that I've selected that previously. Unity also gives us another option for our display dialog, and that's called the display dialog complex. And this is one of those dialogs that has three options. And you'll see this whenever you're changing a scene in Unity. Once you've changed it, the asterisk will appear by the scene. And if you try and exit before saving, it will pop up a dialog saying, do you want to save this scene before exiting? And it will give you three options. Don't save, I just leave this scene and lose all my changes. Save, save those changes and then leave, or cancel, which will keep me in the scene uh, and not save it. Now, we can actually use the library to create one of these. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a clear player prefs option, but this time I'm gonna tell the user, do you want to clear all your player prefs? Or let's say in this particular level that we're playing, I have a player pref just associated with that level name. I'm gonna say, do you want to clear all your player prefs or do you want to clear your player prefs just for this particular level? So let's jump in. We'll be lazy and we'll copy and paste this and we'll just type into here complex and I'm just gonna put complex after here. Of course you would name this something different. In here, display dialog is actually display dialog complex and we'll add a third option. So if I get rid of this bit here and our third option is our alternative option. And we're just gonna say just level. And then this actually, because this couldn't return a flag, uh, a Boolean flag, because there's three options, well, unless it was nullable, we'll come into here and we'll say int dialog result equals, and that's going to give us zero for our first option, which is yes here. It will give us one for our cancel option. And it will give us two for our just level option. So we'll come in and we'll say if dialog result equals zero, do this option. Else if dialog result equals two, which is our alternative, here we would do something like player prefs, and of course this doesn't exist in the scene that I'm using at the moment, it's just an example, but delete key, and then we might just give it the scene name, for instance, because we have a particular um, key that's the scene name for this, this one that we're storing elsewhere. So we could just say name or something like that. There we go. So now if I jump back into Unity, And we open this up. There we go. Three options. Yes, just the level and cancel. And those are our three options there. And those will be the ones we've selected in here. Now Unity gives us some other dialog box options like the open and save dialog. And you can find these under the editor utility class as well. I've used these in a few other tutorials, so I'm not gonna go into them here. And they're pretty obvious how they're used and they're great for if you wanna save a file type that you're creating, etc. And I believe I use them in my templates um, tutorial that you can find elsewhere in this playlist. Okay, so next what I wanna show you is how to create your own dialog boxes. And what I'm gonna show you is how to create a generic text entry dialog box. That is a great thing to have in your repertoire because you always need to change some text somewhere or enter a field value, etc. So it's a good thing to have ready to go. What I'm gonna show you in context is 
I have a baking script that bakes the times into these laptops and I'm going to use this text entry dialog box to change the time. So it's actually a real time and not a fake time like the one you see here, 1567. And it also means that I can change that time into anything I want uh, and bake it in there. So let's get going. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a text entry dialog script. And this will be our generic text entry dialog box. So I'll open that up in Visual Studio. Here we are. And this is going to derive from editor window, which is in the Unity editor library. First thing we want to do is actually create one. So we're going to make a static show functionality. Now we want to pass it a window name because wherever we call this from, because this is a generic text entry dialog box, we want to give it some context. So we're going to change the title to a particular name. And then we're going to pass it any entry we currently have, and we're going to return whatever's changed. Okay, so let's create that text entry dialog. And we're going to do that using create instance, text entry dialog. Now let's change that title to give it the context. Oh, okay, try again. There we go. And new GUI content and the window name. There we are. Put that back. Now, because this is a dialog box and it's a small entry dialog box, I don't want the user changing the size of it. I want it to be a fixed size. So let's set the maximum size it can go to, to say 32120. And we'll also set its minimum size. So that fixes the size, it can't go anywhere. Now, because this is a text entry dialog box and it's, it's a modal one, we don't want to use the standard dialog go method because what this would do is it would enable the user to click anywhere outside of the editor window. Now that's fine if say you have a time controller that changes the, the, the rate that time is running within your game. You'll want to be able to click outside that and change the time and, and move around as you uh, freely. But with this sort of dialog box, you want to actually fix the user. You want to say, right, you've got to make that entry. And until you've made the entry, you can't do anything else. So instead, we use the function called show modal. And that will basically fix it in place. Now, the next thing to do is to store this entry. So, because that's what we're going to want to put into our field. So dialog dot m entry equals entry now because we're passing something into this dialog if we were to cancel out of the dialog we're going to be wanting to return what we sent into it in the first place a cancel means no change only if we press the ok button do we actually want to return a change so we're going to store another variable and we're going to call this entry field result. And we're going to have this take an entry. OK, and of course, we've got a return value here. And this return value is going to be the field result. Now, if I save that and go back into Unity, to call this dialog box, I'm going to need some sort of intermediate step. And as I say, it's a generic text dialog box. So we want to make another script that sits between that and the bake tools we have set up. So we'll come in, we'll create a new uh, class and we'll call this change laptop time tool. And we'll open this up. Here we are. Okay, this is just going to be a menu item. So I'll make this a static class and we'll bring in menu item and I'm going to place this in my mime menu. That menu item. Ah, my menu 
and we're going to call this change laptop time and this is to bring in from the editor library there you go that worked now next is to create the function and i'll use the class name with menu item at the end of it now i want to get the current time that's set and luckily for me my bake laptop time tool my other functionality in this particular game has some functionality for that and that's get time of course this is something particular to my game it's not in a generic unity uh, system so you could use this text entry into any context you actually want now i'm going to receive a new time as set from my text entry dialog and i'm going to show it I'm going to give it some context for the title change time and i'm going to pass it in the time that we currently have and then i'll want to compare those times because there's no point in rebaking if they're exactly the same. So see the string compared does not equal. And then I will use the other great functionality I have, set time, and I'll set it to the new time. There we go. So that's going to call and open my text entry dialog box. So if I go back to Unity, in here I've now got a change laptop time. And that opens my dialog box. Now, as you can see, because I'm using that show modal, I can't click outside of it. And there's no way to change the size of it because I've set the min and max sizes. So now let's enter the details in here. And to do that, we'll fill in our on GUI functionality under our text entry dialog box. So on GUI. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is layout now if you were to just start adding in the text entry and the buttons right here the problem you have is they're all going to be squished up the top and they're going to be really hard to read so i like to have some layout some space between my items make it really easy for the user to read it will remove frustration they have and make them more efficient so to do that we'll put in gui layout dot space and we'll give some space at the very top. And the next thing is to actually add our entry. So M entry field results equals editor GUI layout. This is going to be a text field. It's going to take in the value we currently have. And we're going to give it a width. And this width is just going to be just shy of our actual dialogue because we want to give it a little bit of space around the outside of it just again to make it readable now the next thing to do is to add the buttons now if i was to add the button straight under here they would be flush up against the text field which won't look good and if i was to use the space 20 i would have to force the actual sizes of everything to make sure those buttons fit down the bottom so a nice thing that unity has is something called the flexible space and this will basically make sure it pushes those buttons right down to the very bottom the next thing is to put the buttons in. Now, I want the buttons to be in a horizontal layout. And if you use begin horizontal and end horizontal, it will make sure any items that are put in between these two parts will basically be in a horizontal layout. Now, I want the buttons to be to the right of my GUI. So again, I can put in flexible space. And because it's between these horizontal layouts, it will basically push it to the right. It does horizontal space. So let's create our buttons. GUI layout dot button, and this will be our cancel button. And I'm going to give this again some width because I don't want it to span the entire thing because super large buttons are harder to read. And then I'm going to add another button. Button, and this one's going to be okay. And I'm going to make this the same size, just for convenience. There we go. Okay. Now, the next thing to do is to, again, make it nice and readable. I don't want those to be absolutely flush against the bottom. So I'll use the same size I stuck on top and I'll stick it down the bottom. So this will give nice outline of space around all my elements inside my GUI. Now, I want to put in some functionality 
in here with the cancel and OK. But I'm going to make a couple of functions to do that because I'm going to call them elsewhere in my script later on. So I'm going to make a function called accepted. And this function, all this is going to do is it's going to check if I'm null or empty because I don't want to return null or empty for this particular text entry dialog box. Now you could put in a flag above in here that says allow null return or allow um, null space, white space return, string empty or whatever, and enable that to happen and test for that flag down here and return um, white space or whatever you want uh, if they press accepted and nothing is actually in the text entry. But I don't want that in my particular function. Next thing I'm going to do is close. Because this entry field is already filled here, that's what I'm going to return here. So I don't need to do anything else in my accepted. In my cancelled, however, this, because I'm cancelling, I actually want to set my entry field result to entry because I've cancelled. I have not performed, I've, the user has said, I'm not performing an action here. I'm cancelling this functionality. I'm not going to change what they actually did. I'm going to return back that entry. I'm going to put close here. Another option here would be to return a flag saying whether it was OK or not with a Boolean and actually have an action here that sets some function um, in return. Uh, so that's an option you can do if you wanted to. But here I'm going to simply do a string return. So we'll take our accepted. We'll take our cancelled. And that is now filled out. Let's go back into Unity. So we come back in, look at our My Menu, change laptop time, and here we are. We've got 1567, which is currently set on there. We can come in, change that to say 1545, press OK, and there we have it. 1545 on the laptop, nicely baked in using my bake tools. OK, so let's look at this dialog box again. If I open it up, when we open, we have to select time. And then once we've changed the time, we press OK or we press cancel. Now, there's a problem with that. It's inefficient. If I open this dialog, I'm going to change this time. So I want to give this value focus. And also, I want to be able to give shortcuts for the keys. I want to press enter for OK or escape for cancel. So let's enter that functionality into here. So text entry dialog. Let's start with giving focus. Now, Unity has a slightly unknown set of functionality and it's GUI set next control name. Now what that does is it sets a name for this text field that I can then call to give focus later. And because I'm going to use the string for the name in two places, I'm going to make it a constant. Oh, text field name. And I'm just going to call this text entry. So we're into that into here. So now that text field is called text entry. So now let's give it focus. So at the end of my own GUI, I'm going to do GUI dot focus control text entry there. So that will give it focus. But to see the problem with this is then this is going to give it focus every time it does the on GUI, which is going to be super annoying, especially if you've got other fields and trying to press the buttons. So we want to know that we've done this as a first pass. We've done our first pass. We've set our focus and then we want to forget about it. So we'll put in the flag. First pass. We'll say, yes, this is going to be our first pass. If first pass is true, give that the focus. And then, of course, we want to set that flag false. OK, so great. We're giving focus to our text field. But now we've changed our text. We want to receive the enter key or escape key to give us a shortcut. To do that, there is something called an event current. 
we want to make sure that's actually set. Now this tells us whether a mouse has been pressed or a button's been pressed, etc. And in our case, we want to see if a key's been pressed. So if it's a key. So then we'll go through and see which keys have been pressed. So event current dot key code. And you'll notice this if you use the old input system. And we'll check for what key code has actually been pressed. And we're going to check a current a couple of things. So we're going to see if the keypad enter has been pressed. And we're going to see if the return key has been pressed. And if it has, we're going to run our accepted functionality. And we're going to break there. And we're also going to test for if the escape key has been pressed. And if it has, we're going to use our cancelled functionality. Now, what I always prescribe to tools programmers that work for me is I say to them, watch your users, see what they do. If they're trying to do something that doesn't exist, is it a common piece of functionality that they're trying to use? And if it is, and if it's going to save them time and it's efficient, you should think about incorporating that into your tools. And it could be a preference that they could turn on that's only for them or a preference they can alter so that different ones can have different things like hotkeys, etc. So I always prescribe watching your users as they use your tools to find out about these sort of things. And I learned that users want to actually just type in straight away. So they want the focus on the initial thing. And they also want keyboard shortcuts because they want to do it nice and efficiently and quick. So let's save this and go back into Unity. Now, if I open my change time tool, I come in here, I've got the focus immediately. See, that's got focus. So now I can actually come in and I can press 55. Now, if I press return or enter on my keyboard, it performs it. And there you go, 1555, set on my laptop. And again, if I come into here and I say, no, I don't want to use it, and I press escape, it closes it. I don't need to press the buttons. It makes it a super efficient work process. 44, and there I use the mouse, change to 45, and there I used enter. So see, I can do it multiple ways. It suits each user that will use this particular tool. And that's super important to make your things efficient. Now, the last thing I wanted to add to my dialog box is if I clear my field and I press OK, nothing happens because in this particular context, I'm not allowing them to return a null or a, an empty string for these particular text entries. And as I say, you could allow that with a flag uh, on the show method, but for this one, I'm not allowing them to do it. But now the user sitting here concerned, why can't I press OK? What's wrong with what I'm doing? So we wanna give them some sort of validation we want to pop up a little label underneath that says no text entry entered or something like that. So let's do that. So we'll come back into our script and we'll create a label. And that label is going to go just underneath our text field. So GUI layout.label. And because we know the only validation we're going to be doing on here is no entry set, it's fine to actually have that set up that way. And we could do GUI layout.whip. We can set that to 300. So we know what the validation is, is no entry. If you had several validators, you could basically set a string uh, variable and then pass it in and say show validation. And that's what we need to do. If I just ran this, it would show this all the time, which obviously wouldn't make sense. So we're going to set a flag that says go validation equals false. And in here, we'll only show if we're doing validation. Now, obviously down here, where we're testing for this, that's where we want to see if we're going to show the validation. So let's say if they have that string like that, then we'll want to show the validation. So show validation equals true. Save that, 
Come back into Unity. There we go, in Unity. And now, if I come into here, if I clear this and I press OK, no entry set. It's complaining at me. Now, the only thing here is this no entry set in white doesn't seem like a warning or an error. And also, if I start entering something in, it still thinks there's no entry set, which, which doesn't make sense. So let's make it so that one, this is clearer to the user that it's an error. And two, that once we start entering back in, we clear this out. We don't show that validator anymore. So back in our script, what we'll do is we'll say, okay, if M show validation, we'll add in here that if this no longer, so we'll rob from here, if this is no longer empty, then set validator to false. So that will clear it out. If it's showing the validation and this is not empty, we'll clear that validator out. Now, we also want to set this string, this no entry set validator warning to red because it's a warning sign. And to do that, we use GUI style. So above here, GUI style. And we'll call this style validation GUI style. And it's a new GUI style. And we're going to want to set the color of it. Validation GUI style dot normal dot text color. And we're going to set the color to red. There we go. And in here, we're going to use GUI validation style. Great. But we don't want to create this style every time we come through the GUI. That's just not efficient coding. So let's take this and we'll store it. There we go. And then we'll say, if this equals null, then create it. And we'll just change this to be that. So it will only create it on the first pass through and set it to red. And then that GUI style is built for the rest of time. We'll save that. We'll come back into Unity. And once it loads, there we go. So now if I'm in here, my validation isn't showing. I clear this out, press OK. There it is, nice and red, no entry set. But as soon as I start typing something back in, comes back to life. No entry set, start typing in and our validation disappears. There we go. So now we have a dialog box that takes focus when we open it, enables us to set it straight away, takes return, enter and escape keys for shortcuts and also validates correctly with errors shown if the user is not doing the right thing, and we want to tell them so. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you got something useful out of it. And let me know by tapping the like button if you did. There's lots more of these tutorials already uploaded, so go check out the playlist for them, and you might find some more gems to pick up or even new tools to add. And if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing. It lets YouTube know that this channel's doing well and that people are liking it and it also lets me know to keep going with it and as always thanks for watching <laughs>